Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to use the pen tool to create two overlapping shapes and then add a second photograph to overlay the crumbled mud as a texture using layer masks in order to create this image. I'll start by selecting both images and choosing Photo, Edit In, and then Open as Smart Object in Photoshop to open the portrait and the texture. In Photoshop, I'll target the portrait image, select the Crop tool, and then set the aspect ratio to one to one. Clicking within the crop marquee enables me to then click and drag in order to reposition the crop. I'll apply the crop and then I'll select the pen tool from the toolbar and set the option to draw a path. I'll click and drag to start the path and then continue clicking and dragging to set down anchor points and create the shape. When I'm finished drawing the path, I'll use the options bar in order to convert it to a shape. There are numerous ways to change the fill and stroke settings on a shape. We can select the shape tool and in the options bar, click on the fill color swatch and then click on the gradient option. I can select from any of the different preset gradients and I can make additional changes using the options in the panel. In the options bar, we can also change the stroke options, and in this case, I'll remove it. Another way to quickly apply a gradient to a shape layer is by clicking on a gradient in the gradients panel. To edit the gradient, just double click on the thumbnail for the shape layer in the layers panel and use the gradient editor. Click within the gradient to edit the colors or add additional color stops or click the downward pointing chevron to select from the presets. In this example, I'll use a gradient that I've previously created and saved. Then we can make any other necessary changes to the options in the dialog, such as changing the angle, or in this case, the scale. And we can even drag within the image area to reposition the gradient within the shape. Because I want the next shape that I draw to be independent from the first shape, I'll choose Select, Deselect Layers. Then I'll tap the P key to select the pen tool again. I'll start drawing my second shape to create the illusion of the background showing through. When I'm finished, I'll use the options bar to convert the path to a shape. I'll tap the U key to select the shape tool and change the fill and stroke attributes if needed. If the shape wasn't already filled with black, I would click the swatch icon and then choose black from either the recently used swatches or I could use the color picker in order to select a color. Next, I'll click the stroke swatch and set the stroke to none. Now to make changes to either shape, I can select the direct selection tool, set the options to select all layers, and then click on the path or an anchor point that defines the shape that I want to edit. Returning to the first shape, I'll add an inner shadow by selecting the effects icon at the bottom of the layers panel and choosing inner shadow. I'll adjust the opacity as well as the size, and I'll drag in the image area to adjust the angle and the distance. Now to add a second inner shadow, I'll click on the plus icon and then uncheck use global light. I'll drag in the image to adjust the angle and distance and make any other necessary adjustments. Next, I'll select Window, Arrange, and then Tile to view both images, target the crumbling mud, and from the Layers panel, I'll drag and drop the mud into the portrait. Then I'll close the mud image without saving changes and change the stacking order so that the mud is at the top of the layer stack. Because I want the lighter areas of mud in this image to be less apparent over the portrait, in the Channels panel, I'll drag and drop the RGB composite channel onto the Create Selection icon in order to load the luminosity values in the image as a selection. Then in the Layers panel, I'll click the mask icon to add a layer mask based on that selection. Where the mask is black, the texture layer is hidden and we can see the portrait layer below. Then I'll change the blend mode to screen and I'll decrease the opacity of the layer. 
but I'd like the lighter areas of the mud to be more visible. So with the layer mask targeted, I'll choose Image, Adjustments, Curves, and I'll push the lighter values in the mask to pure white. Then I'll tap the B key to select my brush, and painting with white, I will paint around the portrait, revealing even more of the crumbling mud layer. And finally, I'll tap the left bracket key to get a smaller brush, tap X to exchange my foreground and background colors, tap 2 to set the opacity of the brush to 20%, and paint in the mask to selectively hide a bit more mud over the eyes, nose, and lips. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.